hello students good i hope you are well today we are going to read the text taro's reward from your book honey circle the story taro's reward is a folk tale before started before we start reading the story let's know something about the origin what is folk tale or folklore as you can see in the text uh, folk the word folk means people and you know that the word tale means story then what does word lore means lore means story of a particular book or place so folk tale is basically a story that is particular to a place originated in some place suppose folk tales of bihar folk tales of india folk tales of some other country so these stories are of oral tradition oral tradition means something that is uh, that was originally not written but told from by people from one generation to one another generation so probably your grandmother or grandfather told you a story and you are passing on to your next generation from to your children or your next generation and they are passing on to others folk tales and folklores have always been just like that delivered from one generation to another generation there are many kinds of stories that can be included in folk tale like fables myths fairy tales so let's give you some examples fables you know the stories from panchatantra that you have read uh, you have also have one story in your text like monkey and the crocodile that is a folk tale or folklore and it is also a fable from which we learn something and also fairy tales you have uh, heard many fairy tale stories like uh, the grandmother's tales or in uh, abroad we have read stories like cinderella or snow white so all these come under the term of folk tale or folklore the story we are going to read today is a japanese folk tale a japanese folk tale which may, uh, the name of the story is taro's reward before we read the story let's watch a small movie or uh, an animated movie on this story so let's enjoy A young woodcutter named Taro lived with his mother and father on a lonely hillside. All day long he chopped wood in the forest. Though he worked very hard, he earned very little money. This made him sad. for he was a thoughtful son and wanted to give his old parents everything they needed one evening when taro and his parents were sitting in a corner of their hut a strong wind began to blow it whistled through the cracks of the hut and everyone felt very cold Suddenly Taro's father said I wish I had a cup of sake it would warm me and do my old heart good This made Taro sadder than ever for the heart warming drink called sake was very expensive How do I earn more money he asked himself How do I get a little sake for my poor old father he decided to work harder than before next morning taro jumped out of bed earlier than usual and made his way to the forest he chopped and cut chopped and cut as the sun climbed and soon he was so warm that he had to take off his jacket his mouth was dry and his face was wet with sweat 
My poor old father, he thought. If only he was as warm as I. And with that he began to chop even faster, thinking of the extra money he must earn to buy the sake to warm the old man's bones. Then suddenly, Taro stopped chopping. What was that sound he heard? Could it be? Could it possibly be rushing water? Taro could not remember ever seeing or hearing a rushing stream in that part of the forest. He was thirsty. The axe dropped out of his hands and he ran in the direction of the sound. Taru saw a beautiful little waterfall hidden behind a rock. Kneeling at a place where the water flowed quietly, he cupped a little in his hand and put it to his lips. Was it water? Or was it sake? He tasted it again and again and always it was the delicious sake instead of cold water. Taro quickly filled the pitcher he had with him and hurried home. The old man was delighted with the sake. After only one swallow of the liquid, he stopped shivering and did a little dance in the middle of the floor. That afternoon, a neighbor stopped by for a visit. Taro's father politely offered her a cup of sake. The lady drank it greedily and thanked the old man. Then Taro told her the story of the magic waterfall. Thanking them for the delicious drink, she left in a hurry. By nightfall, she had spread the story throughout the whole village. That evening, there was a long procession of visitors to the woodcutter's house. Each man heard the story of the waterfall and took a sip of the sake. In less than an hour, the pitcher was empty. Next morning, Taro started for work even earlier than the morning before. He carried with him the largest pitcher he owned for he intended, first of all, to go to the waterfall. When he reached it, he found to his great surprise all his neighbors there. They were carrying pitchers, jars, buckets, anything they could find to hold the magic sake. Then one villager knelt and held his mouth under the waterfall to drink. He drank again and again and then shouted angrily, Water! Nothing but water! Others also tried, but there was no sake, only cold water. We have been tricked! shouted the villagers. Where is Taro? Let us drown him in this waterfall. But Taro had been wise enough to slip behind a rock when he saw how things were going. He was nowhere to be found. Muttering their anger and disappointment, the villagers left the place one by one. Taro came out from his hiding place. Was it true? He wondered. Was the sake a dream? Once more, he caught a little liquid in his hand and put it to his lips. 
it was the same fine sake. To the thoughtful son, the magic waterfall gave the delicious sake. To everyone else, it gave only cold water. The story of Taro and his magic waterfall reached the Emperor of Japan. He sent for the young woodcutter and rewarded him with 20 pieces of gold for having been so good and kind. Then he named the most beautiful fountain in the city after Taro. This, said the Emperor, was to encourage all children to honor and obey their parents. You have enjoyed the story now let's come back to the explanation as you have seen this story teaches us that we should obey our parents we should take care of our elders and this actually helps us in future because by the grace of God and uh, everything we always get benefited if we care about care of our elders from our heart so the protagonist or the main character of this story is named taro and taro lived with his parents in a lonely hillside so they were very poor because he was the only earning member of his family and he was a woodcutter so what was his occupation or profession he went to the forest he cut wood cut plants trees every day and he sowed those woods to those branches those uh, wood to the market and thus he earned money to feed himself and his parents he worked very hard because obviously wood chopping is a very hard work but he didn't though he worked very hard he did not earn that much money he earned very little money that was very painful for him very sad for him why not because he was greedy for money taro was not greedy for money but he was a very thoughtful son thoughtful son and he wanted to take care of her parents in a better manner he thought that his parents had gone through many troubles in their life and he wanted to make their lives better so he wanted to give his old parents everything they needed everything that they wanted or desired taro wanted to give them but as taro was very poor he did not earn many much money by selling the woods he chopped he was very poor and he could not uh, fulfill his parents all wishes one evening when taro and his parents were sitting in a corner of their hut so as they were poor they did not have a big house they lived in a hut where probably there was only one room and it was not very uh, windproof so the weather if there was any harsh weather if there was harsh wind or cold the hut did not protect them that much so one day as we have already seen that they lived in a hillside so as you know uh, the hillsides are normally very cold places so one day and the in the evening a cold wind strong cold wind was beginning to blow and uh, the weather became in general very cold and you have seen uh, you will uh, see if you notice that old people probably your grandparents they experience cold in a harsh manner than younger people do because old people get feeble and weak so their immunity power decreases so on that day when the strong wind began to blow taro's father was very cold everyone felt very cold but taro's father especially was very cold and he wished for a cup of sake what is sake sake is a warm drink which uh, if you drink it 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 is very tasty it is very delicious and it is also good for winter it is also good for winter time cold times 
so taro's father wanted a cup of sake because he thought it would warm him it would save him from the cold wind this made taro sadder than ever for the heartwarming drink called sake was very expensive so obviously as this drink was very popular so it was very expensive also and we know that taro was very poor so he could not afford to buy the sake but as he was very thoughtful son he wanted to provide for his father he wanted to give his father everything he wanted and needed so he started thinking about how to buy little sake for his old father and he decided that the only way he can buy sake is to earn more money and how would he earn more money he would have to work harder he already worked very hard but he thought that he will work even harder so he will be able to chop more wood and thus he will be able to earn more money next morning taro jumped out of the bed earlier than usual so normally every day taro used to get up in the morning and go to the forest to chop wood but the next morning as he had a decision in his mind as he wanted to earn more money he woke up earlier than usual so the time he used to get up every day he woke up earlier than that and made his way to the forest he chopped and cut chopped and cut as the sun climbed and soon he was so warm that he had to take off his jacket so as we know even in the cold weather if we always maintain some physical activity our body gets warm you will see that by yourself so when probably on the winter time you came to school when you sit inside the classroom you feel very cold you wear your jackets and sweaters but on the game period when you were outside and running and playing you feel hot you feel warm and on that time though it is cold outside often times you remove your jackets and sweaters because as you are uh, having some physical activity as you are going through some physical activity your body gets warm so that's what happened with taro he was working very hard and he was he got very warm and he hoped he wished that my poor old father if only he was as warm as i so now you can see how thoughtful how good son taro was he did not think about the fact that he has to work very hard he got warm only because he was working very hard but he did not pay attention to that he only thought that i am very warm and i hope my father can also feel this warmness because my father is suffering from cold and with that he began to chop even faster because every time he thought about his father his determination grew to earn more money with which he will be able to buy the sake for his father thinking of the extra money he must earn to buy the sake because he knew his father cannot go through any physical activities father was old and frail and very weak so he cannot do any kind of physical activity that will warm him so the only way to warm his father is to buy sake and for that he will have to work even harder when suddenly taro stopped shopping what was that sound he heard could it be could it possibly be rushing water so taro as we know taro's profession was wood cutting so he was working in, he had been working in that forest for a long time but he had never heard or seen of a stream or a fountain in there so suddenly when he heard the sound of rushing water he was very intrigued he was very curious that let's see because he has never seen uh, a stream on that place and he wanted to go there taro was very thirsty and he ran towards the direction of the sound 
so taro has been walking since the morning for a long time and it was it made him very thirsty he wanted to drink water now uh, as taro has heard the, the sound of a rushing water as you know that when water remains stagnant when the water if in a water body like in a pond the water remains stagnant just in one place it doesn't go anywhere so the water becomes dirty very uh, soon you know very rapidly the water becomes dirty many kinds of soda and fauna begin to grow there and the uh, many kinds of uh, water and water insects etc form there but if in the always the rushing waters the running water are always cleaner than still water the stagnant water so taro could understand that if there is a rushing water body then the water will be clean and he will be able to drink it taro saw a beautiful little waterfall hidden behind a rock Kneeling at the place where the water flowed quietly, he cupped a little in his hand and put it into put to his lips. So, as we have already seen, Tar was very thirsty, so he lost no time. The moment he had reached the place where from where from where the sound was coming, he had seen that there is a waterfall which was hidden behind a rock. So there was a big rock, and behind that the waterfall. was there so that is why probably that was never seen it before and he saw that the waterfall was beautiful and he was very thirsty so he lost no time he went and tried to drink water he uh, made his hand he cupped his hand what is cupping his hand just see this picture to put the two hands together like uh, when you do puja Or, or something like that you cup your hands for flowers for anjali just like that taro put his hands together to make it into a cup and in which he will be able to store the water and drink it but as soon as taro had drunk it he understood that it wasn't actually water it was better than water it was the expensive and delicious drink sake he was confused at first because who had ever heard of a delicious drink of waterfall a fountain of delicious drink so you would also be curious on you if you probably uh, go somewhere and see a waterfall a fountain of mango juice or liquid chocolate so just like that taro was very confused and amazed to see that the fountain was not of water but of the tasty delicious expensive drink sake so to solve his confusion to uh, forget his confusion uh, he tasted the drink again and again and then he could determine the fact that it was actually sake it was not cold water but actually it was sake now see though taro does not have a lot of money one of his dreams one of his wishes had come true if there was a waterfall of sake then there are plenty of sake to take home and give to his father what did he do he had a pitcher with him in which he probably brought water for himself so that pitcher had emptied earlier because he had already finished drinking that water what did he do he filled the pitcher with the sake what is a pitcher pitcher is a uh, an utensil uh, in which you can hold some liquid in this story there is uh, see you see this picture these pictures these are called pitchers okay an utensil to hold liquid so that's what uh, taro did taro filled the pitcher with the sake and hurried home he didn't complete uh, his work complete his wood chopping because he wanted to go to his father and uh, gift him with the sake so the old man was delighted with the sake obviously taro's father dreamed about drinking sake for a long time and finally when he had got it he was very happy he was delighted very happy 
After only one swallow of the liquid, he stopped shivering and did a little dance on the middle of the floor. So what is the meaning of the word shivering? Shivering means when you are you feel very cold, you uh, there there goes on a shaking. So when Tar, uh, Daru's father was very cold, he felt very cold. He was shaking with the cold, or he was shivering. But the moment he had drunk the sake, it was so warm, it was so delicious that immediately the man stopped shivering. He felt instantly better as if the cold has stopped and he felt so fit, he felt so rejuvenated that he did a little dance. See, this is funny because the man was feeling very weak before that but the sake proved to be medicinal it helped him to heal and he became so fit that he did a little dance because he was warm and he was very happy that afternoon a neighbor stopped by for a visit so taro lived in a village and there are many there were many neighbors living uh, there outside so one of them came to visit their house just like our friends and neighbors do normally Taro and his family was very good people, very courteous people, very polite people. So Taro's father thought that we have a pitcher full of sake. Why not offer it to someone? Just like we do when someone comes to our house, it is a custom to offer them food. To uh, We often offer them beverages like tea or sweetmeats, things like that. So Taro's father offered him a cup of sake. The lady drank it greedily. Now see, there is a thing. Taro and his family, they were not greedy. Taro always thought about not his own well-being but of his parents. And Taro's father was also not greedy because he wanted to share the good thing. They were very poor but the limited sake they had, he wanted to share it with other people. But the lady, the neighbor who came to their house, she was greedy. When she caught that sake, she drank it greedily because probably because she was also very poor she never drank something like this and he she drank it immediately and thanked the old man but obviously she was curious that how can poor people like taro and his family could afford sake so what did taro do taro told her the story of the magic waterfall see that shows us that taro was not greedy at all because what do what do normally greedy people do? They guard their secrets. If they have something good, they do not tell it to other people. But Taro, being a good person, he wanted to share the story so that others can also access the delicious drink. Thanking him for the delicious drink, she left in a hurry. By nightfall, she had spread the story through the whole village. So. The lady was very greedy and she thought that we will all be able to drink the sake. That evening, there was a long procession of the visitors in the woodcutter's house. Each man heard the story of the waterfall and took a sip of the sake. So, as the lady, the neighbor who came to Taro's house, she gossiped about it through the whole village. And probably people didn't believe her at first because who had ever heard about a fountain of delicious drink? So all the people of the village came to Taro's house on that evening. So there was a long procession. Procession means like a march. A lot of people, a lot of villagers came one by one to the woodcutter's house. And Taro and his family being good people, they did not... Uh, they did not deny to feed them the sake. They provided everyone with the sake, the limited sake that they had. So everyone took a sip of the sake. In less than an hour, the pitcher was empty. So Taro and his family, they did not drink the sake. They could have kept the sake for themselves and drank it all by themselves. But they did not do it. They shared it with other people. And within an hour, the pitcher was empty because the whole uh, village had come there and drank it. Next morning, Taro started for work uh, even earlier than the morning before. So we had already seen 
that the previous day taro woke up early because he wanted to earn more money but this day taro's intention was even more taro still wanted to work hard but then he thought that he will uh, bring another pitcher of sake because the previous one that he had brought had already emptied so he wanted to uh, fill another pitcher of sake bring it to his uh, parents and then work hard like the other days so what did he do he carried the largest pitcher he owned because he knew that probably again the villagers will come to their house to drink the sake so that is why to feed everyone else and to keep enough for themselves he carried with him the largest pitcher the biggest pitcher that he owned and he intended first of all to go to the waterfall when he reached it he found to his great surprise that all his neighbors were there so other people were very greedy too all the other villagers they wanted to get the sake for themselves they were not happy with the sake they got from taro they wanted enough for themselves so all of them were carrying pitchers jars bucket anything they could find to hold the magic sake now see taro he only carried one pitcher it was a large pitcher but he only carried only one pitcher to uh, take it for the, his parents and the villagers but the other villagers who came there he, they brought every kind of utensils like pitchers jars buckets anything they can find so they were so greedy that only one kind of utensil did not satisfy their need they thought that they will uh, just fill all their utensils with sake so that they can have more than enough then what happened one villager knelt and held his mouth knelt means to sit on your knee because the waterfall the water is coming in the uh, ground level and you cannot uh, take you cannot fill it fill your pitchers by standing so the villager knelt he sat down beside the waterfall and held his mouth under the waterfall to drink he drank again and again and then shouted angrily water nothing but water so these people the other greedy villagers they came there to have sake but see the waterfall was magical so it provided sake to taro who was a thoughtful son who was a good person but the other villagers who were very greedy they did not get the sake but only water see their cruelty does not stop there when everyone has tried and so, so they have seen that this is not sake but the cold water what did they feel how did they feel they got very angry okay so see they were not thankful they could have been thankful that taro uh, gave them sake that taro did not keep all the sake for himself but they but he selflessly let everyone drink his sake they were not at all thankful for that but they were angry they told that we have been treat they thought that taro had made them into fools and what did they say they said that let's drown him into this water pool so they were so cruel they wanted to kill taro they wanted to say, they thought that taro has made fool of ourselves so let us drown him we will not let him live we will kill him we will drown him in this water pool so you can imagine their feelings they were not at all thankful but very cruel muttering their anger and disappointment the villagers left the place one by one so when all the villagers have understood that uh, this they will not be able to get sake from this water pool they left they did not wait they did not do anything and this confused sake uh, sorry that confused taro a lot because taro uh, when the villagers were there he understood that everyone was angry with him so that is why he was he hid himself so, so that the people will not be able to find him and kill him but he saw 
everything that was going on there and he was very curious he was very tense anxious and sad he thought that was it actually a dream that probably is it true that he dreamed about it he wanted to bring sake he wanted to collect sake so much to uh, give it to his father that probably he, he dreamed it but how can that be possible a whole lot of people had came to their house and drank sake so taro was very confused that how is it possible how uh, could this waterfall provide sake the earlier day and water to the next day so what did he do he wanted to make sure and he again got there once more he got a little liquid in his hand and put it into his lips it was the same fine sake so again when taro went there to put an end to his confusion he had seen that it is sake not waterfall then he understood that the waterfall was magical okay so probably a uh, god or some or the divine nature made the waterfall like that that the waterfall will provide sake to only good people only the thoughtful people so the uh, waterfall was magical and it provided sake to the thoughtful son taro but everyone else who were greedy were not at all considerate were, were not at all kind it provided only cold water the story of taro and his magic waterfall reached the emperor of japan he sent for the young woodcutter and rewarded him with 20 pieces of gold for having been so good and kind so the story tells us that if we do good deeds if we are good person if we are kind and compassionate and have a mentality of helping others then we will always be rewarded but it has to be like that you cannot try to help other because you wanted some, you want something good it has to come from within you see taro he was a good person he did not think about being rewarded he only wanted to help the other people he wanted to help his father he wanted to feed his villagers so that is why he was a good person from within and that is why nature rewarded him with the sake and also the emperor of japan emperor of japan he understood that taro is a model person a very good and kind person so that is why he rewarded taro with money and also he renamed the fountain the magical fountain of with the name of taro okay and so it becomes taro's fountain and this said the emperor was to encourage all the children to honor and obey their parents so that emperor by doing this by rewarding taro and by naming the fountain in the name of taro the emperor wanted to reinforce this lesson he wanted to tell all the children all the people of his country that if you are a good and kind person if you honor and obey your parents and other elder people then the nature of god will always reward you now let's discuss the question answers why did taro run in the direction of the stream so you see the uh, numbers behind beside your questions these are the number of the paragraphs in which the answers are given okay so you will be able to find the answer of question number 1 in the paragraph number 5 so why did taro run in the direction of the stream taro let's go to the paragraph number 5 yes taro went uh, run to the stream because he was very thirsty okay and he was curious because he never seen or heard the rushing stream there and he was very thirsty so that is why he ran towards the direction of the sound because he wanted to drink water the second question how did taro's father show his happiness after drinking sake taro's father 
felt very warm after drinking sake and did a little dance on the middle of the floor. So you will be able to find this answer in paragraph number 7. Why did waterfall give taro sake and others water? Again, you can find the answer in paragraph number 12. The waterfall gave the waterfall gave taro sake because taro was a wonderful son. He was thoughtful and kind. So that is why the nature helped. That is why the nature rewarded taro with sake. But the other people, other villagers, they were very greedy. They were not thoughtful or kind. So that is why others only got water. Why did the villagers want to drown taro? Because the villagers were very cruel and not at all thankful. They thought and most importantly you will have to write. The villagers thought that Taro had tricked him or made them into fools. So that is why they wanted to drown Taro. Why did the emperor reward Taro? The emperor re rewarded Taro because Taro had been thoughtful and kind and he wanted to reinforce this lesson to all the other children of his country that if someone obeys and uh, honors their parents then they will always get rewarded so basically the answer would be taro was a thoughtful and kind son that is why the emperor rewarded taro mark the right item taro earned very little money because Yes, as you uh, can understand, the price of wood was very low. How, how do you understand that this is the right option? Because see the other options, he didn't work hard enough. That was not true because we all have already seen that Taro worked very hard. So this is wrong. The second question, the villagers didn't need wood. That was probably not also correct because this is a village and people made food by wood and uh, they have made their houses with the wood, so they needed wood, but the price was very low. So that is why Taro earned very little money. The second question, Taro decided to earn extra money. Why? To buy his old father some sake. So Taro was already very poor and he knew that he won't be able to live a very comfortable life. So this is wrong. The third option to repair the cracks in his heart that is also not given in the story so it is also wrong but the second option is correct because when Taro's father was very cold and he was shivering he wanted to drink some sake. Taro being a thoughtful son he wanted to give his father everything he needed so that is why he decided to earn a little extra money. The third option the neighbor left Taro heart in a hurry because she wanted to tell the whole village about the waterfall how do we uh, know that because by that evening by nightfall everyone in the village had heard this story so she wanted to tell the story to everyone in the village so that's all for today i hope you have understood and enjoyed the uh, story just uh, complete the question answers by yourself with the help of this video have a good day.